If you're seeing this light, wherever I put it on screen, if you're seeing this light on the dash of your Mercedes, it's safe to say you're in need of some brake pads. No, that isn't the indication that the earth is round and is currently spinning or anything like that. It's the brake pad wear indicator light. Now, your wear indicators are these little guys. Um, they're basically a very simple setup. Power goes to the light in your dash, and then the ground is just not connected to anything, except for these. So what happens when this little plastic tip of these things wears down to where it makes contact with the brake rotor, it has a ground source and illuminates the brake pad warning light. So when you're changing brake pads, pop a set of these in, and that way you're prepared for the next time you need to do brake pads. Sometimes they're reusable, but for the price that they cost, uh, might as well just replace them. So these are only on the front of W123s as far as I'm aware of, but we're gonna go ahead and check all the brakes on my car just to make sure that we're safe and ready to stop in any conditions. So let's get a jack under this car, pull a wheel off and take a look at our braking situation. So what was originally intended as a quick video on how to replace your brake pads and wear sensors on a W123 has uh, spiraled out of control into now I'm replacing calipers, rotors, brake lines, and flushing all the fluid out. I got the other side of my car apart and found that the seal, which just a dust seal, but still the seal around the caliper piston was completely destroyed, ripped, torn to shreds, and the caliper was sticking. Not a good time, wore one pad out completely while the other one was still brand new, so it was time to do this. I mean, the braking system components on this car are nearly 40 years old, if not already 40 years old, so it won't hurt to go through and make sure everything is up to par so that the car is 100% safe to be driven on as long of a trip as I want to take it. So, to get started on this, now that I've done the other side, I can kind of act like I know what I'm doing here. Uh, we're gonna pull the wheel off. We've already got this jacked up, it's in the air. Um, and this one seems like it might be sticking a little bit too, so we're just in time. Ooh, this one doesn't look that great either. So, we're essentially gonna be replacing the caliper this hose and all of the pads and associated doodads in there. Um, so to remove the caliper, there are two 19 millimeter bolts on the back side. I'm gonna see if I can get a picture uh, with my phone to throw up on the screen. So those two 19s, grab yourself a 19 millimeter and A ratchet and we're just gonna reach back in here you may want to be more careful than I am if you're planning on reusing a caliper but if all you're doing is pads you don't even need to remove all this stuff the pads on these are designed really well there's pins you can drive the pins out with these little holes in the front here and then pull the pads out through the top, put new pads on, the caliper can stay in place. Really neat design. But for our purposes, I'm not even worried about yanking on this hose when it falls off because I'm replacing the hose. There we go. Set that back there on the control arm and everything. It's nice kind of maybe not intended design, but you can set the caliper back there if you're servicing the rotor or wheel or anything. So now as far as changing the actual rotor, we have to pull 
the whole hub assembly off. So we need to get in under this dust cap so that we can unscrew the um, bearing retainer. So let us grab a screwdriver most likely. Sometimes you can grab these and pull them off, but that one's on there pretty snug. Break this loose. And try not to drop it on the ground and get a bunch of dust in that. Because that would defeat the purpose of having a dust cap. Now this has been serviced at some point. It's got red grease in there. We're gonna take a rag and wipe up a bunch of this grease so that we can get to this locking thing, thingy, locky, the locky thing. Just bust that loose. And then once that's loose, we can spin this out. Grab a rag or something to set some of this stuff on so that we don't get dirt into our bearings when you throw it on the ground like that. Okay, so now we can grab our hub, pull the hub off, and get to the back of our hub. I would also highly recommend an impact. Yeah, they're 10. Because I would not recommend putting them in with an impact. You'll just uh, cross thread them. But as far as taking them out, definitely an impact. So ear protection once again. So now we can separate our rotor from our hub. So this probably could be resurfaced. It doesn't look all that horrible, but I've got a new rotor anyways, so I'm just gonna put a new rotor on. And yes, the rotor I have is drilled and slotted. I'm not sure where I got it from. Probably way overkill for this car and just gonna make more brake dust and wear my pads out, but I've got it, so it was no expense. I'm not sure where I got it from. I feel like I ordered it years ago. Um, anyways, we can put this on and line everything up. And now remember what I said, don't start these in with the impact. That old 18 volt impact has uh, seen better days. It's not putting out nearly the torque it should, so I don't feel bad about using this. The air impact would probably snap every one of those off. So don't wanna do that. So now we can put our new rotor and hub assembly back on, put the bearing in, preload the bearing to the spec, and start working on the caliper. The proper way to set your bearing preload is with a uh, magnetic um, dial indicator and you push and pull on the hub and make sure that it's just right. I've never done that. What I always do is spin the wheel and then just spin this until you feel it. Just start to drag. And then back it off about an eighth to a quarter turn and tighten it up. So just that drag point back off a hair and you'll have 
just about the right preload. Never had an issue doing that for 10, 15 years that I've been doing this. So um, dust cap can go back on now. First of all, start by pulling off this stuff, which is our wear sensor bracket, which is a 10 millimeter. You can do all this with hand tools, but power tools just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit faster to pull stuff apart. I wouldn't recommend putting that stuff back on with power tools because it's easy to cross thread, easy to break off these little, little bits of hardware. So So let's see if we can slide these guys in here. Oh, look at that. That one went in pretty nice. The outer one, not so much. Oh, oh, maybe, maybe, it's just a little tight. Just needs a little wiggling and assistance to get in. There we go. These go in from the back. So there's these two little pins and this clip. Now the clip goes in just like this and the pins ride over the top of it. I'll get a picture of this once it's in because it's not really gonna be easy for me to find a way to film putting this in. So once you get those pins in over top of the little anti-rattle clip, you can press them in either with some sort of a small hammer like this or you can get a C-clamp, might make it a little easier to just gradually pull them in. So now we're gonna replace this hose, which is pretty simple. One end just threads into the caliper. Just like that. For whatever reason, on a German car, this fitting is 7 sixteenths up here. Don't ask me why, it just is. So I like to put a little rag down on my floor so that I don't ruin my nice concrete. The brake fluid is some pretty mean stuff. Let's take our new hose, put it in here. Nice and snug. Now, wear sensors. These little guys right here are wear sensors. They fit into the pads on your caliper and then connect to this little harness. I've got some new wear sensors here, so we can bolt our little harness onto our caliper. Essentially, the wear indicators will go and push in to these holes in the pads. So you gotta kinda get everything lined up just right and then push it on in just until they bottom out. And there you have it. Now. As far as flushing the braking system, we'll move on to that now because that's also gonna include bleeding these brakes. So, bleeding brakes, there's a lot of ways to do it. There is only one way to do it in my mind because I've tried a lot of the other ways and they are absolutely miserable. So, let's get on to that. Okay, so up here at our master cylinder, this is the way to bleed brakes. With a power bleeder and an adapter for the top of the master cylinder, this takes 
all of the labor out of it, more or less. And we are going to pressurize this up to around 5 to 10 PSI, somewhere in there. So this motive bleeder makes it super easy. You can see the fluid starting to trickle its way in. Oh. Okay. So we got leaks from these things. What are these? Okay. I may need to get some new caps for this so that it will actually hold pressure because that is meant to be somewhat sealed and is not sealed at all, it appears. Okay, we'll come back to that. After some brief uh, reflection on where I've gone wrong in order to get to this point, finding uh, my master cylinder sensors leaking, uh, I realized where I had gone wrong in my life. And that's that when this car was designed, I wasn't born yet. So I didn't realize how those things are supposed to work. So basically I've just said, I have no idea what I'm doing. All right, anyways, I've got new caps on the way now. I went in, looked all this stuff up, and these are not meant to leak. They should hold 10, 15, maybe even 20 PSI to bleed with. And uh, mine don't because they're hardened and cracked and just generally not in good condition. So I have new ones on the way. But in the meantime, I'd kind of like to get the brakes bled so that I can move the car out of the garage and get other things in to work on. So I'm gonna do what any sensible person would do and electrical tape stuff until it stops leaking. Don't try this at home. Wait a second. Am I gonna have to put this on a different channel because I just said that? What we wanna do under normal conditions is bleed the furthest wheel. So the right rear wheel, then the left rear wheel, then the right front wheel, then the left front wheel. That's how you'd bleed um, brakes so that you can end up with uh, all the air out in the most easy way possible. So I've already got this wheel off, which makes it easy to demonstrate the process for you guys. And I can go back and do it properly later. So we're going to open this bleeder and basically just let the air flow out. So we're going to do that at all four corners of the car until everything is flushed out. Obviously, if you're not replacing calipers, you'll have a lot more dirty, nasty fluid before it comes out clean, but that's pretty much all there is to it. We're gonna flush the fluid everywhere else until we get nice, clean fluid coming out, and then we're all done. Just got the new caps for the master cylinder uh, level sensors, so we'll get these popped on and Hopefully that'll solve our leak. I did manage, as you saw, to get the brakes bled, get everything flushed out. Uh, the electrical tape didn't work perfect, but it worked good enough to get the car back into a drivable state. Um, so obviously you only saw me bleed the one wheel. You'd have to do all four, but let's pop these things on and uh, go from there. These are new mall caps, mail, however you, however you pronounce the brand. So there's our two new caps. And these things just come off really easy. You just pop them off and you can see just how dry rotted these things were. These were falling apart. So it's no wonder there's water in there. Let's put these new ones. And they just pop down on. Oh, that's much more pliable. Boy, if I had had these a couple days earlier, I wouldn't have had to have electrical taped everything. Now, that car should be set, ready to go for as long of a trip as we want to take it on. So it's nice not having the potential of water and air intrusion because that master cylinder is sealed up good now. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Um, as always, there's 
uh, more things on the way, uh, interesting stuff that we get into every day. So hopefully you'll stick around and enjoy some of the other content that I produce. So thanks for watching.